So in this talk, I'm going to consider many examples of equivalence relations, all motivated by a particular way of thinking of equivalence relations, which is as follows. So you have a set S and a set T, and there's a function F from S to T. Like this. This is F. And I define the equivalence relation on S as follows. So two elements of S are related if and only if the function values, the values of f at the two points are the same. Okay, now why is this an equivalence relation? If you think about equivalence relation as reflexive, symmetric, and transitive relations. Let's just check all the conditions. So reflexive. Is it reflexive? Why? Is every element related to itself? Is it symmetric? Well, if FA equals FB, yeah. well, does that mean FB equals FA? Yeah. The same as saying FB equals FA. And is it transitive? Yes. Why? Okay, and so you're using that equality is transitive, and so okay, yeah. yeah. It's just like above you, that equality is symmetric. So good. So so this is a reflexive, symmetric, and transitive relation. So it's an equivalence relation. What are the what is the induced partition by this equivalence relation? What are the what are the equivalence classes? Hmm? Uh, the reverse images. The inverse images. So the equivalence classes are simply the inverse images of points in T. Or are the only those points in C which are actually in the range of the function. Because for points which are not in the range, the inverse image is empty. And by the way, that's another way of seeing that this that this is an equivalence relation. That if you can see that though that actually form a partition, these sets, and and that's another way of seeing it. They're all equivalent essentially. So what is an equivalence relation actually doing? Well, in some sense, you can think of F as, as capturing some attribute of, of the elements of S and ignoring everything else. And so we say that two things are equivalent if they, if they match each other in that attribute. Okay. So let, let's say you have, okay. So, so you can think of F as, as capturing an attribute and the equivalence relation is just saying that that attribute value is the same. Okay, so we can imagine, let's look at the human population here. Let's say you have humans and let's say you have a three sex classification. You have male, female and other, okay, which might include uh, various special cases. Okay. And let's assume that, that like you, that this, uh, that you can have a well-defined function which sends every human being to one of these three, male, female, and other. Okay? There's all our humans. How many dots do I need to make? 60 billion. No, it's just 7 billion. 60 billion. No, no, it's 7 billion. 7 billion. So, okay, we have all these 7 billion dots here, and there's this function, which is the gender function, okay, which sends everybody to M, F, or O. What is the, in, what is the induced equivalence relation by this function? Induced? Well, I mean, what is the corresponding equivalence relation for this function? For any function, I can define an equivalence relation, right? Mm -hmm. Like this, what's the equivalence relation here? If you have the same sex. Yeah. So the corresponding equivalence relation is the same gender equivalence relation. 
in the picture you might put all the males here and all the females here and all the others here so what are the equivalence classes well there's three equivalence classes potentially okay assuming that the world has males females and others right there's the this there's one equivalence class the males the females well i didn't label them but let's assume this is the males this is the females and this is the others okay so the equivalence classes are just all the all the things which which have a particular value of gender mm -hmm. okay the equivalence relation is just the same gender relation okay and uh, and what else? Well, we, I think I said it all, right? Mm -hmm. So, so this is an example of of an equivalence relation. Now, you could take another equivalence relation. Let's say you could have eye color, something. If 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 the equivalence relation is a reasonably discrete one, then this is really nice, right? If there's just a finite bunch of points here, and everything maps neatly. So, let's say everybody has either blue eyes or green eyes, right? Then you could do something similar. Instead of male, female, you'd have blue eyed and green eyed. Now you get into some trouble when when the function is is not discrete valued but continuous valued. So that actually the values can vary continuously. Then the equivalence classes could be pretty small. Let's take a, new, a mathematical example now. So let's say, are you down here? Let's say we have f x is sine x. Oh, maybe I'll make it. Um, that's a little complicated. Okay, let's do it then. So, so what is the equivalence relation? When will you say that two elements, two real? So this is our set, a function on R. What what is the induced equivalence relation? F x one equals to f x two. So two elements are equivalent if the value of the sine function is is the same on both. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me make it a little simpler. So. I'll instead of taking a scalar valued function, I'll take a vector function. So I'll take the function cosine x, comma sine x. So this is a vector valued function, it's two coordinates. Okay. So now in this case, if it's this, what what is the when do you say that two elements of the real numbers are equivalent? Um, yeah, it's each of their coordinates equal to zero. So the cosine values also agree and the sine values also agree. Now under what conditions does that happen? So what are the equivalence classes is what I'm trying to ask. Equivalence classes? Yeah, that means for under what conditions will two elements have the same cos will two real numbers have the same cosine value and the same sine value? <coughs> Think of the picture, the unit circle picture. So a cosine value and a sine value tells you the angle up to some ambiguity, right? Mm -hmm. What's that ambiguity? Ambiguity? Yeah. I mean, suppose I tell you cosine x and sine x. Uh -huh. You don't quite know x, but you almost know x, right? What What do you not know? <coughs> suppose I tell you that cosine x is 1 and sine x is 0. What does that tell you about x? Hmm? Is the integer, is integer the multiple pi? of 2 pi? Of 2 pi, right? Oh. Because, yeah. In general, if I tell you the cosine value and the sine value, it's like locating the point on the unit circle. Mm -hmm. But that's almost like telling you the value of the angle up to integer multiples of 2 pi. Right? I mean, so if, if the, if, if I know one value in the equivalence class, all the others are just that value plus, plus what? Um, Sorry? Um, 2 and pi. 2 and pi. Uh -huh. So the equivalence classes, 
are what? So the equivalence classes for this. are of the form x plus 2n pi okay for this is the equivalence class of x okay for any element the equivalence class is the set x plus 2n pi okay okay so each equivalence class how big is it oh infinite it's infinite it's actually countably infinite and how many equivalence classes do you have? Infinite. infinite, but that's uncountably infinite. You'll have one for every point on the unit circle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's take a simpler example quickly. So maybe just just to cheer you up, uh, f x is mod x. What are the equivalence classes for this function? So this is r to r. But actually, it, it doesn't take any negative. I'll just take positive. What are the equivalence classes? Hmm. Absolute value of x. Yeah, what are the equivalence classes? What are the things which map to the same thing? X and x. Well, so the there's one equivalence class of size one. All the others have size two. What's the equivalence class of size one? Zero. Zero. The equivalence classes are zero and things of the form a negative a, where a is well, you could make it, you could restrict A to be positive because the, the equivalence class for negative A will be the same as that for positive. So you can just take, take the equivalence classes for each positive one that will cover the equivalence class for the negative ones also. Okay.